in Las Vegas, Nevada. And coming up here, live from Tulsa, Tommy Morrison in a 12-round fight against fellow heavyweight Michael Betts. Morrison trying to move one step closer to a potential matchup after the first of the year with WBC World Heavyweight Champion Lennox Lewis. As we get ready for Morrison and Bentz, Larry Merchant, I'll start off with you. Tommy Morrison arouses a great deal of excitement here in Oklahoma. How much excitement does he arouse for you as a heavyweight championship contender? Well, this is a, a test that will tell us something. And what I do know about this fight is that there are a number of very, very nervous people at ringside, all of them connected with a potential fight with Lennox Lewis next year. Both his people and Lennox Lewis's people. His people can't understand why this fight is happening. After all, this is the year in which two heavyweights who had a chance to make big money in title fights, Ray Mercer and Alex Garcia, both lost to potential setups. But Tommy Morrison himself wants this fight. I think he thinks he has to beat a fighter like this to prove to himself that he can take on a boxer like a Lennox Lewis. But there are a lot of nervous people here, and we've seen stranger things happen. What you're saying is that he had the Lewis fight in the pocket. He didn't have to take this fight. He did it, not his handlers, huh? Seven and a half million bucks for that fight, and he's making about a fifth of that for this fight. And he's in that position because he got a 12-round decision over this man, George Foreman, last April. What do you think it did for Tommy Morrison's psyche to get a win over you? Like any football player playing in the Rose Bowl or participating even on the sideline of the Super Bowl, you become a better fighter because of it. He's a sleeper. He's going to prove to a lot of people he's a lot better than they think he is. Are we likely to see that tonight, or is that a tough position for him tonight? Well, he's got everything to lose and nothing to gain, so it doesn't leave him in a good position to go out there and give his best. So there's a lot of nervousness on his part but probably will see a good fight. All right, we've been waiting for it. Michael Bent against Tommy Morrison, and here now is Bent, born in London, England, reared for part of his childhood in Jamaica, wound up in the Cambria section of Queens, New York, five-time amateur national champion. He calls himself the finest amateur boxer never to have made an Olympic team. He lost in the trials to Ray Mercer in 1988. I think both the good news and the bad news is those five championships. The good news, obviously, he was an outstanding amateur. The bad news is, why after two or three of those titles didn't he try to improve himself by turning pro? It suggests some weakness in his emotional or mental armor, and that's what Tommy Morrison wants to exploit tonight. Bent comes into the ring. A remarkably inexperienced professional fighter for his age. He's 28 years old, some say he's 29. He's had only 11 professional fights. In his very first professional fight, he was knocked out by a southpaw named Jerry Jones. And he didn't fight again for another 22 months. So the career got off to an extremely slow start. He can jump start it tonight. Now, Tommy Morrison insists that the theme from the movie 2001, thus... Frank Zarathustra be played before he leaves his dressing room to enter the ring. And if he doesn't win tonight, it'll be at least in 2001 before he gets a title fight. <laughs> Perhaps. Pepe Carrera, who is Lennox Lewis's trainer, told me today that if the best, the best Bent shows up, he can win the fight. Pepe Correa, because of the money that Lewis can make for fighting Morrison, is scared to death of that possibility. Now the music changes to George Thorogood, bad to the bone, and that is Tommy Morrison's entrance music. Come from Oklahoma, about an hour's drive away from here, where he's bought a house recently. And where is a high school student? He was voted the man least likely to survive, meaning survive his teenage years. <laughs> well, he made he it out of a 
wild one. He made it out of his teenage years. Is he going to make it through his 20s? I think if there was another vote taken, he'd win that contest, too. Donnie has been known to party hardy. He says he's been walking the straight and narrow in anticipation of his title shot. Nicknamed the Duke because of his reported distant relation to the late John Wayne. He also has a distant relationship to some of the five heavyweight champions who have fought in Tulsa either before or after they won titles. Marvin Hart, Jess Willard, Jack Dempsey, Primo Canera, and Max Baer all fought in Tulsa. You have just become the first boxing <laughs> analyst ever to draw a relationship between Tommy Morrison and Jack Dempsey. Nevertheless, or Primo record. Canera. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. 38 wins, <laughs> one loss, no draws. His career is really more defined by the loss than by the 38 wins because many questions about Tommy were raised in his fourth round knockout at the hands of Ray Merkel. Joe Lewis got knocked out before he won the title, so he's not in bad company. Tale of the tape. Morrison, four years younger than Bent. They are similar in weight, but frankly, when you look at them close up, Tommy Morrison presents the bigger, stronger picture. Punch that numbers, Larry. We're comparing the Carl Williams fight with Tommy Morrison because that's the fighter who most resembles Bent. And in that fight, Morrison threw very, very few punches, as you can see, compared to what Bent did against Mark Wills in his last fight. Although in his later fight against George Foreman, Morrison punched considerably more often and harder. And there are the jabs, and that tells you what kind of fight this is. Bent the boxer, Morrison the slugger. And Tommy has thrilled the crowd by entering the ring in a Tulsa Oilers hockey jersey. Rules of the bout from our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. Tommy Morrison and Michael Bent will box tonight using the rules of the World Boxing Organization. 12 rounds. There is no standing eight count. The three knockdown rule is in effect. You can be saved by the bell in the last round only. Only the referee can stop the fight. And in case the cut is caused by an accidental headbutt, and that cut causes the fight to be stopped, we go to the scorecards after three rounds have been completed. Before that, it's a technical draw. Jim. Right. Brilliantly done, Harold. Right now, let's go up to ring announcer Michael Buffett for the pre-fight introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, Top Rank Incorporated and Holden Productions, in association with the undisputed, undefeated king of beers, Budweiser, proud to be your bud, presents the featured bout of the evening. This bout is sanctioned by the World Boxing Organization, supervisor in attendance at ringside, Mr. Ed Levine of Miami, Florida. All the other officials will remain the same except for the judges and referee. The judges assigned by the WBO, scoring on the 10-point must system are Harry Davis of Toronto, Canada, John Rupert of Miami, Florida, and Dr. Clark San Martino of Kingston, Rhode Island. And when the bell rings, the man in charge of the action, working for the second time in a world championship bout from Kansas City, Missouri, Danny Campbell. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh, let's get ready to rumble! Twelve rounds of boxing for the WBO. Heavyweight championship of the world. Introducing her. Fighting out of the blue corner wearing the white trunks with gold, black, and green trim. Weighing in at 226 pounds. He's originally from London, England, but now lives and fights out of the Big Apple, New York City. He brings a professional record of 10 victories with five KOs. Only one defeat on his record. Ladies and gentlemen, ranked number nine in the world by the WBO, he is the challenger, Michael. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, weighing in at 227 pounds, wearing the black trunks with stars and bars trim. His professional record, 38 victories, 33 KOs, only one defeat, 
He's a wrestling from right here in the state of Oklahoma, now fighting out of Kansas City, presenting the WBO heavyweight champion of the world, Tommy the Duke Forrest. Let's go, gentlemen, come out here. All right, pretty much two seconds right here. Right here. Right here. How about over here? Right here. All right, gentlemen, we're all in the rules of the dressing room. Let's have a good, clean fight. This is for a heavyweight championship of the world. God bless both of you. Take hands. Let's come out and fight. Any organization that calls this a heavyweight championship fight Ready? defines itself, but that doesn't mean it can't be a good fight. I think the bent corner is coming out taunting. That means whistling through the graveyard to me. Michael Benton, his last fight prior to this one against Mark Wills, broke his right hand and won anyway. Didn't have the brace taken off of his right hand until the third week of September. George Foreman in the past has told us it is impossible for a fighter to come all the way back from an injury like that this rapidly. Yeah, it takes a lot of time before you get confidence, even if he ha ever had confidence. They said he was a good amateur, but the pros are totally different. Big question here, is Bent strong enough to handle Morrison's power? And the early returns say no. The thing is, if Morrison can control this burst, is embarrassed more than anything in the world. Right. That'll quiet the crowd a little bit. And Bent again lands the right. We saw Morrison go down twice in the same round against Carl the Truth Williams. Right. One more knockdown and this is over and Michael Bent knows it. Three knockdown rule in a fight. supposed to fight Evander Holyfield next, and he lost to Buster Douglas. This is the third time this year something like this has happened in the heavyweight division. I think Tommy Morrison picked the wrong style to fight this guy in the first round. He didn't need to mix it up so quick. He hurt him and tried to finish it off. Couldn't control his burst the power. It was exactly what Ben expected. It was what Morrison told us he was going to do yesterday, George. He had the same question in his mind that I mentioned about whether Ben could handle his power. As it turned out, the equation worked the opposite way because Tommy gave Michael Ben the chance to get off. Right, and he was hurt. Tommy just stood in front of him and waited for him to hurt him back. He should have controlled himself, hurt him casually coasted along and just kept hurting this guy, but he didn't do it. All right, let's take a look at how all of this happened, George. As you take a look at a, a Michael Bent who is clearly overcome by this sudden change in his career. This man has gone from virtual unknown to heavyweight title contender in a matter of seconds. Michael, turn around. If you ask me, it was too many firecrackers. All right, we're going to take a look at all three knockdowns. Now, early, Bent had been stunned by a left hook. So Tommy came in, and that's what happened. Walked right into an unnecessary mix-up that he needed not even have. Hurt the guy, hurt the guy, and the experience that should have taken him over. Then he gets right up and starts to exchange again, which was not necessary. That made two. And at that point, there were still a minute and 40 seconds remaining in the round. And Morrison George showed none of the professional skills necessary to get out of trouble. It's called overconfidence. 
he never would have gotten out there with a fighter like that that he feared and overwhelmed him in the first round. If he had started the fight the way he fought you for 12 rounds, you got to have a certain amount of a fear to be a, a, a good fighter. That fear was not present tonight, and it cost him his title. Right now, let's go up to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the official particulars. Your attention, please. Referee Danny Campbell enforces the three knockdown rule. The official time, one minute. 33 seconds into the very first round. The winner by TKO and new WBO heavyweight champion of the world, Michael. A nice moment as Tommy Morrison comes over to congratulate a still tearful Michael Bent. And now Larry Merchant stands by with the winner. Larry. Michael Bent, you can have two or three T's at the end of your name now. Congratulations. Why were you crying after this fight? Well, if people knew my travels, man. Baby cry too, you know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> a dream come true, man. 20 years, man. And it's like all the things that my personal problems. My mother, I love you. Uh, struggled hard. My father, I love you. Maybe we'll talk sometime later on. You know, people in Cambridge Heights, Jamaica, London, I love all, all you guys for supporting me. Uh, Hope, I love you. Uh, big up, Warren. Uh, let's go to the fight, uh, Mike. Right, Michael. Go. You expected him to come out the way he did, didn't you? And so what were you were you ready for it? And what did you do? Well, if you hit me, I want to fight. You know what I mean? I, I had a game plan. My game plan was to box Tommy, but he hit me, got me kind of pissed off. So listen, let's do this, man. You know what I mean? He, he, he seemed to do more than that. He seemed to hurt you a couple, no, he, wobble he you a him. couple listen, times. Listen, my first fight, I got stopped. I hope this shuts up all the damn critics who said I couldn't do it. Who said I had no chin. Who said I was suspect. Who questioned my character. Hope this up all you got. My friends so were you, my character. So were you seriously hurt or buzzed when he hurt when he hit you a couple times? Did you see it? <laughs> well, I got I saw it, but I want to know what you think. Yeah. What do you think, Larry? I thought you were buzzed. Yeah, yeah, of course I was. That's why I knocked his ass out. Because I was buzzed. <laughs> so he woke you up. All right, let's take a look at the knockdowns, and you describe what happened after you were buzzed and how you felt. The first knockdown. Uh, right hand, right over the top. And when he was, he was shaking up. I don't think uh, Tommy, uh, he had the rest, he had the rest of, excuse me, he had the rest of my, my uh, hand speed. And my punching power, obviously. But, but you know what? Hand speed is punching power. So, you know. All right, here's the second knockdown. That's the left hook right there. Right. You think that after he buckled you, he got a little wild and careless? No. I mean, listen. I mean, if I were to say that, that, that he got wild and careless, which means that I've implied that, uh, that, uh. No, it implies that you took advantage of it. Well, you're implying right then. Here's the third. Did you realize that if you got him here, that it was over? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I was going to, I was going to. Bust them up as 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 Enjoy this one, but as far as tomorrow's concerned, yo, take on the world, man. Riddick, I love you, brother. My man, but you got something I want. Lennox, I love you too, but you got something I want. Let's, let's do this, man. Okay, we'll see what they have to say. Hey, what's up, Back to your ring, side. There you go. There you go. All right, the references there, of course, the Lennox Lewis and Riddick both, both of whom Bent knows well from his amateur days and from his work as a sparring partner, George. He's been in the ring with the best guys. Maybe that helped him tonight. Maybe so, but in my mind, Bent is less than an average fighter who did something great tonight. He got out there and caught a guy overconfident, hit him with a right hand that he never recovered from. That is not the Tommy Morrison that we can see a lot more of in the future. Well, let's see what Tommy Morrison has to say about what happened to him here as Larry stands by with him. All right, Tommy, you heard him, buckled him twice early in the round. Did you get a little careless then, do you feel? I think I got a little bit careless. I uh, started uh, waiting in uh, without uh, 
uh, with very little defense. And I got caught with a good shot. You know, it happens to anybody, uh, but this is uh, uh, by far uh, not the end of me. I'll be back. I learned from uh, my mistakes. That's what we're going to do tonight. Why did you want to take this fight, which many people thought was dangerous, including your own handlers, uh, rather than go straight to Lennox Lewis for a much larger purse? Well, I don't think uh, I, I don't think that uh, I, I don't think that uh, I mean. I, I wasn't real impressed with his skills. I don't think uh, you know, he was pretty decent, but it's just my mistakes of what uh, you know what hurt us. Uh, but I'm a young fighter. I'll bounce back from things like this. I have before in the past, and that's uh, just one of the things you have to try and learn from. You're saying you you underestimated what his power, his his willingness to take a good punch. I don't think I no I, I didn't underestimate his power. Any uh, you know anyone in the heavyweight division can hurt you. Uh, defensive skills are something that uh, I feel we've. Uh, have improved on, but obviously tonight, uh, you know, everyone gets caught with that shot every now and then, and, uh, you know, he capitalized on it, and, and I didn't. Dumb question. If you had it to do all over again, would you fight Michael Bent or wait for Lennox Lewis? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I leave that up to my managers. You know, they usually make the right decisions in that area. Uh, you know, these are sort of things that you learn from. You know, you, 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 these sort of things happen. Fighters either bounce back from it or they don't. Uh, you know, I, I, uh, I was impressed by, uh, you know, the way he mixed up his punches. But uh, Tommy Morrison beat Tommy Morrison tonight. I stayed in the middle a little bit uh, too long with, and got caught with some good shots. I mean, any man over 200 pounds can hurt you. So thank I you very much. Thank you very much, Tommy. A very expensive lesson he learned here in the ring tonight. Jim? All right, and a very candid assessment, George, when he says Tommy Morrison beat Tommy Morrison tonight. Now, he had the $8 million date with Lewis in his pocket and went ahead and took this fight. Is it impossible for a guy in that situation to properly concentrate on the business at hand? It's kind of hard, but the thing, the tremendous thing that happened to Tommy Morrison tonight, each time he was knocked down, he got right back up. That tells you he had no intentions of losing. He didn't believe he, he's lost in his mind. He'll make a comeback, and a terrible comeback. A All good right. One. Well, let's take a look now at the round once again in its entirety, this time on our handheld camera. And George will take a look at exactly what you've described, Morrison's willingness to get back up and roughhouse with Bent at a time when he would have been better served protecting himself. He hurt him so easily in the first couple of exchanges. He wanted to finish it too quick. It's not what he's done in the last time with Carl or the two William or George Foreman. He couldn't believe it, so he goes out for a quick knockout. Tommy's run. bread and butter is the left hook, and there he backs Bent up with the left hook. And you'll see him hurting and landing the effective punches. And he hurts him, and he goes crazy. Then you leave yourself wide open for a fighter who's been in the amateur too long to just stand in front of that long. Now watch Bent's fast hands here when he comes over the top with the right against Morrison, as you say, wide open. See? Boom. And it's, it's strange, but it happens to a lot of fighters. But Morrison tremendously gets up because I don't believe it. And that's the test of a champion. Not how many times, not if you can get knocked down or not, but can you get up? Now, we saw in the Williams fight, Tommy doesn't know how to hold on, cover up, protect himself in the ways that so many professionals have learned. Ma mainly because he doesn't believe this is happening to him tonight. If he had any idea what would have happened, he would have been better, better prepared. Now, here's the moment of truth. A minute, 40 seconds, still to go in the round. Three knockdown rule in effect. Tommy knows that he must stand up for the remainder of the he round. He goes forward. Incredible. Tells you something about Tommy Morrison. Got courage. Sometimes courage can be a handicap in boxing. Could he still have been underestimating Ben's punching power? No doubt moment? about it. He didn't get beaten. He got caught unsuspected by uh, 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 with a punch he never thought he'd get hit with. Mondo Bizarro. And as Larry Merchant points out, third time this year that a heavyweight contender has had a massive speculative paycheck taken away from him by an untimely loss. Wow. Well, I was right, and uh, I haven't pulled this one out for a while, but we have called this game the theater of the unexpected, and the most unexpected things usually happen in the heavyweight division because uh, in this division more than any, uh, any other, one punch does change the course of events, and there are a lot of heads spinning right now and some people chuckling over the fact that a miscalculation was made and other people planning how they can fill the vacuum. All the wheels in the heavyweight division money rooms are spinning madly right now. But we have seen a very decisive and dramatic end to Tommy Morrison's quest for a fast heavyweight championship fight. And right now, after that defeat, I'm not sure, as I said earlier, that uh, it won't be till past 2001 before he earns 
a shot at the heavyweight champion. Certainly Lennox Lewis is reconsidering his options tonight. George Foreman, Larry, a power of candor this evening, says that Michael Bent is at best an average fighter. You got any reason to believe or to argue that he's something better than that? Well, all we can say is time will tell. Uh, as we said earlier, some people said if the best if the best of him shows up tonight, he could beat Morrison. Uh, everyone has always known about him as a great amateur. It's wondered why he uh, hasn't fought uh, more often as a professional. Thought he had the ability. He's been with a number of different handlers, including uh, Emmanuel Stewart, Mickey Duff, the great uh, uh, British manager and promoter. But sometimes, uh, in, and again, more often in the heavyweight division than not, uh, late in years, somebody pulls it all together, whether it's out of uh, desperation or through his experience. And of course, as it turns out now, instead of him being the perfect opponent <laughs> for Tommy Morrison, Tommy Morrison turned out to be the perfect opponent for Michael Bent. Let him enjoy this moment and we'll see down the road uh, what else he can do in the heavyweight division. Indeed. Tommy thought that Michael was just a stepping stone to Lennox, but in the end, it was Morrison who got his head bent tonight by first by a right hand and then by a series of punches. We'll give you a final wrap on this entire evening of boxing at the Tulsa Civic and Convention Center after these words about a couple of upcoming programs here on HBO.